Hello, and welcome to another video from 3.5 Archive. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that diverges a little bit from the 3rd edition rules themselves, and more into what can be done with them that cannot really be done in any other edition. D&D 3.5 has a wealth by level table, which represents the expected wealth in total that a character would have at each level. This could be accomplished roughly if you built dungeons using the treasure generation rules in the Dungeon Master's Guide. But many Dungeon Masters, perhaps most, did not stick to it religiously, and as a result, many parties ended up either far behind or far ahead of their expected wealth by level, usually the latter. This could be an issue, as a 15th level fighter without any of his magical gear was a pale shadow of his fully equipped self. A negligent Dungeon Master could effectively steal several levels worth of strength from his player characters simply by not doling out enough magic items or gold with which to buy them. Such a unique issue, which is hardly present in any other edition of D&D, begs a question. What if one were to link the two directly? What if, rather than using the admittedly convoluted rules for experience points awarded based on encounter level, based on a collection of challenge rating and the party's level, one instead used the wealth by level table as a way of advancing each character? The way that this would work would be, the Dungeon Master would keep careful track of the treasure the party finds in the dungeon, and at the end of each session, each player or character present for the session gets a number of XP equal to their share of the gold value of treasure taken that session. This effectively locks in each character to their wealth by level totals, with some leeway here and there, uh, assuming that treasure is divided evenly. This method of advancement will have a few different effects. For one thing, it will disincentivize simply killing monsters, as all gold for XP systems tend to do. This means that characters will not feel the need to worry about whether or not the Dungeon Master will still give them experience for avoiding a combat encounter with stealth, diplomacy, or trickery. Their only goal is getting gold. This is nice because it aligns with player motivation, which is to level up, with a character motivation, which is going to be to get gold. While this does in some ways make the campaign a little bit more shallow, it doesn't have to do this necessarily. There can be plenty of other character motivations, besides simply getting gold, that simply function uh, parallel to the general uh, method of advancement, as it would be in any other campaign where you get experience points for killing monsters. That is a standard argument in favor of a gold for XP system, but how would it synergize with D&D 3.5 specifically? Having a wealth by level table gives more weight to the gold for XP model, for one thing, uh, but it also allows you to structure a campaign around the expected magic items a character is going to receive. After all, magic item shops where you trade in your 10 plus 1 longswords for a plus 2 longsword can feel a little bit like they're sucking the magic out of magic, so to speak. They can seem too much like a video game conceit rather than one meant for a tabletop role-playing game. For example, uh, consider a hex crawl organized campaign world, one where the campaign map is composed of 6-mile hexes that form discrete spaces for characters to travel through, some of which contain points of interest. If you wanted to minimize the buying and selling of magic items, you can consider the so-called standard issue magic item loadout of characters of 5th and 15th level. The reason for considering these two levels is because the magic equipment of a 5th level character will not be particularly too powerful in the hands of a level 1 or 2 character, and the magical equipment of a level 15 character will not feel too overpowered in the hands of a level 10 to 12 character, so long as they only have one or two such items. What you can do here is find the expected equipment for a player character of those levels, and then distribute these items throughout the dungeons, having one item uh, in each dungeon as the final reward. You can have two rings, so to speak, one of 5th level dungeons and one of 15th level dungeons, the latter further out from the starting area. Different regions with different encounter tables can form a varied and dangerous wilderness. Dungeons that each contain a singular magic item as its prize can provide focus for characters who wish to seek out a specific item. You can also sprinkle throughout these dungeons other minor magic items and regular treasure, though their value would be toned down quite a bit, at most 25% of their normal amounts. You can also add in lore surrounding the rumors of these items, but the idea is that a character might have a plus 3 cloak of resistance as their only magic item for a short time. This will strain the math of a game a little bit, but it will also make that magic item feel a lot more significant to that character. Rather than a normal part of the numbers advancement treadmill, that can sometimes feel like a grind in D&D 3.5.
Some aspects of the game, such as a fighter effectively needing a magic weapon by around level 3, and the rest of the party, save for perhaps the wizard, effectively needing to have one by level 5 or so, are worth considering as exceptions to this. And you can still have some magic item shops or traders or other opportunities to purchase magic items, but this, uh, this campaign format will take the focus off of needing those sorts of venues for characters to get their magic items. Um, that will be what the extra treasure is for, as well as for attrition and to make up for missed opportunities, as characters aren't going to explore all the dungeons in the setting. But the best part of this campaign style is that characters will never be behind on wealth by level, assuming that they are able to utilize said wealth effectively. With some work as the dungeon master to keep things balanced, this can be a very satisfying and rewarding concept for a campaign. And it really only works in D&D 3.5. In earlier editions of D&D, the concept of wealth by level was almost non-existent in terms of expected loadouts of magical gear, as well as expected total net worth at certain levels. Uh, aside from, of course, that which is suggested by the gold for XP advancement tables. You would get experience points for gathering gold, but it wasn't going to feed into any sort of structure of expected magic items at different levels. Nor was it really expected that you were going to be buying and selling a lot of magic items. Most of your experience points did come from gathering treasure in these older editions, but magic items were not as baked into the advancement expectations. A lot of times this is seen as a downside to 3.5, but this campaign style can turn it into an upside. In 4th edition and 5th edition, magic items were simply defined by their rarities rather than price, and while a vague range of prices were given, nothing concrete was given, and there was really no expected loadout of magic items for a character. This evolution is in many ways an improvement, if only because these additions don't expect characters to have certain types of items to keep up with the mathematical progression expected by the game. As such, characters are going to be more free to pursue more interesting magic items without issue. There are workarounds for this in 3.5, such as combining magic items or mixing up body slots to allow for more interesting items to be carried, besides simply those granting numerical bonuses. You may want to consider, for example, combining a Cloak of the Bat along with a Cloak of Resistance in order to give characters more varied and interesting abilities. But you should be careful as the game does expect characters to have certain items at certain levels and deviating from that too much and requiring their wealth by level to suffer as a result is going to eat away at the integrity of this campaign model. So you might want to consider such items being exempt from the wealth by level advancement. This can get messy, but it's something that you can figure out on your own. And the great advantage of this campaign model, again, is that it utilizes the wealth by level system in D&D 3.5, giving characters their own goal to work with, something that their characters can work toward directly and not having to sort of couch it behind innuendo of having characters that want to kill monsters, but they don't want to kill monsters too, too much. They don't want to simply kill whatever they see. They still have to couch it in terms of their character's motivations and alignment. While some character's alignment, such as a paladin's a lawful good alignment and code of conduct, might run contrary to simple treasure seeking, there wasn't much of an issue with this in earlier editions, and you can uh, simply look at the morality of searching for gold exclusively in those terms. And again, these don't have to be a character's only motivations, they're simply going to be the main motivation for the campaign. And while this may make the campaign seem a bit more shallow in a lot of ways, you can of course introduce other motivations for characters, and they'll probably be willing to follow those just as much as they'd be willing to follow through a non-combat focused adventure and a campaign with normal experience points progression. So to sum up, this can be a great alternate way to run your D&D 3.5 campaign using a system that many DMs find frustrating or restrictive, and you can instead uh, use that to empower uh, yourself to create a more interesting uh, sandbox campaign where the characters will actually have a motivation to go on from the very beginning of the campaign. And lastly, this is definitely not a new or novel concept. Uh, this is how D&D worked in earlier editions. This is just a way that you can use that older system in your D&D 3.5 game and synergize it with the wealth by level structure. So that'll be about it for this video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and so on. Thanks for watching. Please post any suggestions you have for future videos. 
And I will see you next time here on 3-5 Archive.